Hi, so as we all know, as soon as we've killed Kill Jane on any mode, we get to see Illidan's latest piece of naughtiness, Argus in orbit around Azeroth. Look at it there. <laughs> now, of course, as an astrophysicist, I have got a number of thoughts about this. The first of which, of course, I announced as soon as we saw the cinematic last week, which is this thing is going to cause untold destruction on the surface of Azeroth. You thought Deathwing being a bit grumpy did a lot to the landscape as nothing compared to what this would do. But it hasn't happened. We'll let that slide. But there are some other interesting scientific questions that this pose. One of them was asked by one of the tanks in our guild, which is, is it quite small and closest to us? Or is it really big and really far away? And of course, this is an important question. If you know how far something is away from you, you can work out how big it is. If you know how so big something is, you can work out how far away it is. But you usually need one of those two properties. Otherwise, you're a little bit in the dark and you can't quite tell. <laughs> Okay, one last time. These are small, but the ones out there are far away. <laughs> small, far away. So, are there any assumptions that we can make to help us out with this? Well, yes, there are. For a start, we can liken it to the Earth. Now, with the Earth and the Moon relationship, for example, some people don't quite fully appreciate just how far away the Moon is. We sort of know that the Moon's a little bit smaller than the Earth, and people always completely underestimate how far it is. It's miles away. It's 240,000 miles away from us. And the Moon is actually not tiny, but it is significantly smaller than the Earth to the point where... The gravitational field strength is about a sixth of that on the Earth. And gravity holds the key to this whole thing. Because on the Earth, we are designed to move around roughly normal speed. And we can see on Azeroth, for example, with our creatures here, some of them human, some not, we move around at what might be considered roughly similar levels to humans on the actual Earth. So we might suppose from this that Azeroth has a similar gravitational field strength to the Earth. That is not an unreasonable suggestion. Then when it comes to Argus, that doesn't tell us about Argus. Of course, we've not been there. We haven't had any tales told from Argus. We know some people are on it. But we do know that we are going to go to Argus. How we're going to get there is anyone's guess. They're not just going to kick out a rope ladder. It is going to be too far away for that. But we're going to go there. Now, if Argus had a much smaller gravitational field strength than Azeroth, then, as the lunar astronauts found out, we would find that the most efficient way to get around the place would be bunny hopping around. Now, do you believe Blizzard are going to do that for us? No. When we go to Argus, we're going to be moving around very, very similar to Azeroth. I mean, the... the Counter is also true. If it had a much greater gravitational field strength, we would be moving around much more slowly. We would feel weighed down. We'd really feel that air pressure on us. So the fact that we'll be able to breathe normally and move around normally will strongly suggest that Argus is very similar in size and composition to Azeroth. So once we've made that assumption, we can actually suppose that Argus is a similar size planet to Azeroth. Now we can see that the disk of Argus is significantly larger than would be the case for the moon. We can't see any Azerothian moons at the moment. A little bit too much like daytime. But we can imagine what the disk of the Earth's moon would look like in the Earth's sky. This is larger, and quite a bit larger, but still not large enough for something that would actually be the size of the Earth. So we can suppose that this is actually further away than the moon would be from the Earth as well. So this is going to be over a quarter of a million miles away over that, significantly over that. So it is a significant distance that we are going to need to travel. There are a few other things we can note as well. One thing we can note, as some people have pointed out, is you can see the plumes of Fellfire jettisoning out from the surface. Now we can see these quite clearly. That is testament to just how clean Azeroth's skies are. We'd never see that level of in time detail through the Earth's atmosphere, too much pollution. It is quite remarkable when you consider the amount of pollution produced by Azeroth's least important denizens. 
The other thing we'd care to notice as well is we can see clouds on Azeroth here obscuring part of the planet there. But what about on Argus? We can't actually see any atmospheric effects on Argus itself. Does this mean that the water cycle has stopped? Because that would be a strong suggestion. Looking at this, we can see detail of the surface of Argus. And we can see half of the planet. Throughout none of it do we see any clouds that can be attributed to Argus. The only wisps of cloud we see are quite clearly from Azeroth because they're sort of moving in relation to it. So that means not that Argus has no atmosphere, but that it has no moisture in its atmosphere. So that would have a significant effect on the weather on Argus. Now it's not just a lack of moisture in the atmosphere. There also seems to be a distinct lack of oceans or rivers or anything like that so moisture on the surface so a very dry planet now that could also suggest that there is no greenhouse effect either the carbon cycle is absolutely crucial in the greenhouse effect the greenhouse effect obviously gets a bad press because too much of it is a really bad thing just take a look at venus but in actual fact we need it to keep warm over the nighttime periods when the sun isn't really there so no greenhouse effect might suggest that it could actually get to down to really ridiculously cold temperatures in the Argus night time. But of course, we can see on the surface there may be alternative sources of heat. You've got to the northwest here, these fell fire lakes. We've got rivers of fell and fissures all the way leading to what appears to be a massive schism in the core of the planet itself. So maybe we can get heat directly from the core in whatever the hell this is or from these fell lakes. We don't know, of course, exactly which zone we're going to be occupying. I hope it's not around here because that looks very inhospitable. Nonetheless, we might be located near to one of these and that might supply our source of warmth. There is one other thing I should probably say as well. I've been looking at this uh, from last night and through various times today. And one thing that is absolutely key is that at no point do we ever see this thing rotate. Does that mean Argus is not rotating? Not necessarily. Again, likening it to the Earth and the Moon relationship, we might infer from this that the rotational speed of Argus is exactly matching its period of orbit around the Earth. In other words, it's rotating at the same rate as it's orbiting Azeroth. I said Earth there, I meant Azeroth. In which case, much like the Moon, if we could work out its period of orbit, we could also work out the rate at which it rotates. Maybe we have to wait to go to Argus and actually time how long a day is. Now, one other thing I should say is, of course, one difference with the Earth-Moon relationship is we would observe over time the Moon traveling across the sky of the Earth in an arc because, of course, it's orbiting and the Earth itself is rotating. That doesn't seem to happen here. It's always in the same point in the sky. That's more complicated to explain. So I'm going to have to put my thinking cap on for that one. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any comments, put them below. And until next time, I'll see you later.